Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your YouTube Elmer. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. Let's say that you're new to HF and you've just gotten your license and you don't quite know what to do. What are the rules of the road? And I can't cover them all, but I'd like to cover as many as I can in the first of about three or four videos. I don't know it all, and some people will disagree with what I got to say, and that's okay. I've been active for about 58 years and um, had a fair amount of experience. So uh, here are how I view things. Whether or not you want to do these things or follow them is is it's up to you. Um, I think your goal if you get on HF single sideband is to make contacts as many as you can. Get used to uh, to talking into the microphone. Uh, get used to tuning around. Probably that is the key to most everything is the thing I've repeated over and over and over again, the three most important things to getting on the air would be listen, listen, listen. And so you want to listen as much as you can. I probably spend 90 to 95 percent of my time on the air listening. I may be looking to see where the band is open. I may be listening to see what's going on. Is there a, contact, a contest going on? Um, who's on the air? And uh, so I might listen on 20 meters and to tune one into the band to the other over and over again. And, and that's my way of finding out what's happening on 20 meters as I get on the air. <clears throat> so your, your goal should be to make contacts and to get used to transmitting. Along those lines, um, how do you do that? It's more than just talking into the microphone. So number one thing probably is to have the microphone as close to the lips as you can get. I'm going to grab this mic off my desk because it's not plugged into anything. But um, if this were the microphone that I was using, I would have it about two finger widths from my lips. So I'm talking right into it. And I might even have it um, like this where I'm literally touching my lips. I've got a, a, a windscreen on it. Uh, it helps muffle my breath sounds. It changes the frequency response just a bit, but that's okay. I can adjust that. So talk into the microphone. Get it close to your lips. Don't have the microphone gain all the way up so that it is um, uh, introducing all the noise that's bouncing off the walls. This is a room with a lot of hard surfaces. I'd like to add more panels to it to uh, to muffle some of the noise or dampen some of the uh, some of the hardness of of the sound. So keep the microphone close, keep the microphone gain down. Now, that is probably one of the most important things that we're going to discuss. And let me say it this way: the position of that control, the mic gain control, and the compression, and we'll get into the other ones later doesn't matter so whether that knob is up at 25 50 90 100 percent all the way up it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it really does not matter honest to gosh it doesn't what's important is what the meter metering of the transceiver is telling you now, there's a few exceptions and darn few, but if you've got a typical ham radio transceiver, there's a position, a meter position called ALC. And that's one that you're going to be looking at every time you get on the air. And you want to set the mic gain initially so that it's about mid scale, three quarter scale on that ALC meter and not beyond that. If it goes slamming past the end of it be it being a digital meter or an analog meter with a, a needle on it if it's just slamming off to the right the mic gain is too high and you will sound distorted now the people you're talking to may never tell you that they might even say you sound great when in fact you sound terrible and, and i don't know why that happens but it does i hear it literally every day so set your mic gain so it's about 
half scale, three quarter scale to start. Some people don't like to run compression. Most of those who don't like to run compression don't know how to set it. And if they knew how to set it, they would use it. Compression is gonna bring up your average output. And that's a good thing. You're likely to be more intelligible, more easily heard. So having compression set to maybe 5 dB or 10 dB at the very max is probably a good thing. Now, if you maneuver, turn on the compression and you turn it up so now it's peaking at 10 dB, that's probably too high. You only want it to hit 10 once in a while. But now you gotta go back and adjust the mic gain, looking at the ALC meter, not the position of the knob. Position of the knob doesn't matter. It will vary from mic to mic and the way that you speak. So you may have to turn the mic gain down when you turn the compressor on because the compressor is what? It's a mic gain. The same thing with the equalizers in most transceivers. You want to boost the highs and put the lows down. You want the emphasis to be somewhere around 1500 to 2500 hertz. And you may want to push, if it's an ICOM, you may want to turn the treble up to five and the bass down to minus five or minus four or minus three. If it is a Yesu, we'll discuss that in a separate video. And that one is very difficult to set, but it can be done. So having the mic gain set and having it set so you're looking at the meter to set the mic gain, looking at the ALC meter and the compression meter and the equalizer will get to another time. Um, now what do you do? Who do you talk to? Uh, there are lots of net operations and they tend to populate the bands. Oftentimes they're welcoming to, uh, to folks who want to show up and, and chat for a while. And that's a good way to get your, your feet wet. Um, but keep in mind the way a net operates may not be the way others operate on a, on, on a band or on any band. Nets often have their own way of conducting business, whether it's a DX net, a welfare net, the Marine net, the Air, For Air, Air Force net, this net, that net. The way they operate may be very different. Um, two nets may be conduct business, the same kind of discussions, but operate in, in a very different way. They may ask for check-ins and at which time you would give your call sign and see if you're heard. In some nets, it's acceptable if you hear somebody that you want to talk to, to say, contact. I want to contact that guy. So you grab the microphone and just say, contact. If three guys are talking on the air and they're not part of a net, and you hear one guy that you want to talk to, and you say, contact, they may not appreciate it. In fact, they probably won't it's considered pretty much unacceptable. In a DX net, uh, one of the silliest things to say is when last heard, which indicates last time I heard that DX station, he was S5. Well, if you say his signal report is S5, of course that's the last time you heard him. So it's, it's pointless to say when last heard you were S5, just say you're S5. Um, and, and, just tell them your name. Using the expression handle is pretty much frowned on. So just say, my name is Jim. Um, I'm in Sacramento. Q signals, QTH, QSY, QRA, QSL, QSL. Um, my least favorite one. First of all, uh, QTH, no point in saying that. If conditions are difficult, that may be a way, but it just confuses things. You're not on, if you're on CW, that's one thing. If you're on phone, it's a completely different story. So um, it's better just to say my location is Sacramento or I am in Sacramento as opposed to my QTH. My least favorite and the one that gets me upset is QSL. Um, it is used in ways that it was never used, never meant to be. It means, did you understand what I just said for the most part? So one guy says, this is not an exaggeration. And you've probably heard it. One guy says, 
Hi, uh, my name is Jim, QSL. Oh, yeah, QSL, Jim. My name is Dave, QSL. Yeah, Dave, QSL, QSL, Dave. My QTH is Sacramento. QSL, yeah, QSL, Dave. Uh, Jim, my QTH is Los Angeles. QSL, yeah, QSL, QSL, got it. Q if we were just standing talking to each other, would you be saying, did you understand what I just said? QSL does not mean over. I haven't said QSL on the air in years because I find just drives me nuts. So avoid as much as you can using the Q signs on phone. Sometimes you may have to. Another thing too is slow your speech down. Um, so plain language, Q signals, slow your speech down. Um, listen. Listen, 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 listen. Listen to what the other station is going to be telling you. And here's an example that happens a lot. You work at uh, a station and he's loud. He's got stacked Yaggies, stacked amplifiers. He's got an ERP of 50KW and he's pegging your S meter. And he gives you a three by three report. And he turns it back to you. And you say, hi. Uh, my name's Jim. And then you just stop talking. He just told you he's only getting about 60% of what you're saying. And you're probably doing up and down, up and down in signal strength. And if you just stop talking, he doesn't know. So when you're given a report that's less than perfect, it's better for you to say, um, J A 1 A B C D. This is W 6 L G whiskey six Lima golf. You're five by nine. Repeat that. My name is Jim. Repeat that. I am near Sacramento. J A whatever it was A B C D. This is W six L G over. And emphasize that he can barely hear me, even though he's pegging my S meter. He can barely hear me. Why would that be the case? Well, he might have stacked eggies, like I said, stacked amplifiers. Um, which is possible these days, and he has a huge uh, effective radiated power, maybe 50 kW. And you've got a uh, an infed long wire, uh, an infed wire, which is not a good antenna, and maybe you're putting 100 watts into it, and 50 watts is being radiated if you're lucky. You may have an ERP of 50 watts. He's got an ERP of 50 kW. He's a thousand times stronger at your place. You're a thousand times weaker at his. So listen to what the other station is telling you. Give an honest signal report. I was talking to a J, who was it? Um, uh, maybe a guy in Brunei. And he was gave, giving everybody a five and nine and he was saying, but I didn't get your name, what's your location? And I, I said to him, if that station's five by nine, it means you're copying everything. And he said, well, I didn't want to hurt their feelings, so I was giving them a good report. That doesn't help them any. Give an honest report. Um, if you're only getting about 50, 60 percent, say you're three by whatever. You could be three, by, he, you could give out a report that's three by nine or three by nine plus, but you're only getting a portion of it. If the guy is distorted, tell him, help him out. Say, hey, there's some distortion, Jim. I'm I don't know what it is, or it sounds like our feedback, or maybe your mic gain is too high, especially if you're net control. Net control should be setting the example of a perfectly clean signal every time, every day, all day long. I can't tell you how many net control stations sound like garbage, and they should be setting the example. If you're the net control that everybody is listening to, you should have the cleanest signal. Along those lines, if somebody checks in, you should tell them, hey, Jim, your signal's distorted. Don't know why, but you and Joe go off frequency and see if you can see if you can figure it out. Looking at my list, um, I've got when last heard, using the word contact, nets. Uh, the goal is to make contact, slow your speech down, um, pay attention to reports, give an honest report. Those are the, the highlights. Now, those are things that will perhaps upset some people but I think it's important to try to follow those things as best you can it's easy to do plain language uh, avoid saying QSL please avoid saying Q 
QSO. Give an honest signal report. Have fun. Make as many contacts as you can. You may want to call CQ. You may want to be tuning up and down the band and looking for a station that's calling CQ and answer that guy and go from there. That's a great way to make contacts. So you're listening up and down the band. You may want to look at the DX cluster if you have an antenna that maybe has some directionality to it. You may want to see what parts of the world are coming in to your area. And a good way to do that is to look at one of the clusters. Anyway, um, covered a bunch of issues. I have a bunch more to cover, um, and I'd like to go over those things. You don't have to do what I say. I'm just throwing these things out there as things that I have observed and and I, things that might help you. Uh, if you have any questions, post them below. If you disagree with what I said, put that below too. Uh, it's an open discussion. Um, and in fact, for some of you, um, those who have listened to the end of this, and not everybody does go to the end of, of a, a video, I'd like to do a Zoom call with about six, seven, eight, nine, maybe nine guys. Uh, maybe, maybe that would be the most, where they would ask questions or we would discuss what it's like being new to amateur radio. What are the things that concern you? Um, what are the things that don't make sense? Because there's a lot of that. And perhaps I can help with some of those things. Thank you for watching. I'm Jim W6LG in Rockland, California, your YouTube Elmer. And again, if you'd like to do a, um, a Zoom thing, um, send an email using my address. You know where to get it, my email address. And just as the subject line put in uh, Zoom, and, and we'll go, for there. go from there. Thanks for watching, 73.